Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth lesson on network models and protocols. Uh, if you need to follow the lessons in order with the previous lessons, uh, please check the playlist. Uh, so in the previous lesson, we discussed the OSI model. I have put the link uh, to the video in the description box. Uh, we said that it is a reference model and not an actual implementation. So in this lesson, we will learn about a few network protocols that are actually implemented and is in use in various networks. Uh, the network protocols you will learn in this lesson are TCP IP, SIP and VOIP and you will learn more in the coming slides. Right. The first protocol is TCP IP. It is the acronym for Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. Uh, as the name says, it is a collection uh, of a bundle of two protocols. Uh, TCP IP is a suite of communication protocols uh, used to interconnect network devices on the internet. And this protocol stack can be used as a communication protocol uh, in a private company network as well. Uh, the entire suite consists of uh, two main protocols, as I mentioned in the previous screen, TCP and IP. And it functions an, 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 uh, like an abstraction layer between the internet applications and the routing and switching fabric. Uh, this protocol specifies how data is exchanged over the internet and also it identifies how the, uh, how the data that we pass should be broken into packets and addressed and transmitted, routed and received uh, at the destination. Let's see what TCP is responsible and what IP is responsible separately. Uh, the TCP stack defines how applications can create channels of communication across the network. It also manages how a message is assembled into a smaller packets. And then the IP stack defines how to address and route each packet to uh, make sure it reaches the correct destination. So each gateway compute on the network checks the IP address to determine where to forward the message. So you now understand that TCP and IP in combination achieve the duties uh, specified in the seven layers of OSI model that we learned in the uh, previous video. Uh, over the decades, uh, the TCP IP has defined a set of common protocols defined for different categories of application. Uh, the most common protocols include uh, HTTP, HTTP Secure, also called as HTTPS and then file transfer protocol and SFTP, secure FTP. Uh, the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, as we know, it uh, handles the communication between a web server and a web browser. Just like uh, we use our web browser to access the Gmail inbox in Google Gmail server. Uh, the HTTP secure is an extended secure model of communication built uh, on top of HTTP basics. Then to transfer larger uh, files between computers, we have the file transfer protocol, FTP in short. Uh, the secure FTP is an extended protocol FTP that include the ability to handle secure transmission of files between computers uh, by utilizing authentication and authorization of sender and receiver before the file transfer is started. Uh, let's look at the layers consist in TCP IP. TCP IP is a four layer protocol. Uh, they are the application layer, transport layer, network layer and link layer. You need to remember the order because in some previous exam papers they have asked for the correct order. Each layer supports a different protocols or standards of uh, topologies as shown in this diagram. Uh, application layer supports many application layer protocols such as HTTP, DNS, domain name server, FTP, etc. The transport layer support both uh, TCP and UDP. Uh, UDP called as user datagram protocol. Uh, it's a communication protocol used across the internet uh, uh, for specific, especially uh, time sensitive transmission. 
such as uh, DNS lookups, online gaming, uh, and video streaming, streaming likewise. The network layer support uh, IP version 4 and IP version 6. Uh, the link layer support Ethernet and wireless LAN topologies. So when we compare the four layer TCP IP protocol that we uh, learned just now with the seven layer OSI model that we learned in the previous video, uh, video uh, this is how uh, it aligns side by side. All right. Uh, TCP IP protocols application layer contains all the duties and work that the layers 5 to 7 defines in the OSI model. Uh, those are application, presentation and session layers in OSI model. Uh, the transport layer and the network layer of TCP IP directly corresponds to the definition of the transport and network layers in the OSI reference model. Uh, at the lower layer end, the data link layer and physical layer in the OSI model are both achieved through the network interface layer of TCP IP. So if you're wondering why TCP IP did not structure as the OSI model prescribed, uh, the reason is the TCP IP protocol came into existence way before the OSI reference model was defined. Uh, the TCP IP is the first protocol to be created when the networks came into existence and it evolved over time. Uh, since some past paper questions ask about the differences between OSI model and TCP IP model, I have here uh, put up a table for you, uh, kind of a short note and a summarized version. I hope it will help you in your studies. So the OSI model was developed or defined by the International Standards Organization. The TCP IP was developed by ARPANET, uh, Advanced Research Project Agency Network. That is the first computer network. And OSI model provides a clear distribution between uh, distinction between uh, interfaces, services, and protocols, while uh, TCP IP doesn't have any clear distinguishing uh, points between services, interfaces, and protocols. Uh, OSI refers to open system interconnection, TCP IP refers to transmission control protocol. OSI uses the network layer to define routing standards and protocols. TCPI uses only the internet layer. Uh, OSI follows a vertical approach while TCPI follows a horizontal approach. OSI layers have seven layers while TCPI has uh, TCP IP has four layers. OSI model is defined after the advent of the internet, but TCPI IP is defined before the advent of the internet. Right, so that brings us to the end of TCP IP discussion. Okay, so we now move on to the next protocol and that is the session initiation protocol or SIP in short. So what is session initiation protocol? The session initiation protocol is a uh, signaling protocol that enables the voice over internet protocols by defining the message sent between endpoints and managing the uh, actual elements of a call. Uh, SIP supports voice calls, video conferencing, instant messaging and uh, media distribution. So as you can see, uh, uh, you can imagine that SIP is not a complete protocol that can deliver services to an application. It's a protocol that works with VOIP. And let's see what VOIP is. VOIP is voice over IP. Uh, we all have actually used it. Voice over Internet Protocol, VOIP, is a technology that allows you to make voice calls uh, using a broadband internet connection uh, instead of a regular uh, phone line. If you have taken calls using WhatsApp, Skype, that is a VOIP uh, call. Right. So uh, VOIP uh, is a protocol used by any application that transmit voice uh, or a computer or, or internet. You must have surely used uh, IEM applications to take calls to your friends, uh, used for conferencing, uh, connect with clients or a group of friends. All of those applications use the VOIP to transmit audio to the right receiver. 
in addition you must have heard of the heard the term soft phones the soft phones of voip uh, phones are a technology that let you make phone calls through your internet a voip system converts analog voice signals into digital signals over your broadband connection a voip server is used to connect calls to uh, other telephone networks uh, let me explain how a VUIP phone system works with this network infrastructure diagram. Uh, if you look at the uh, bottom of the diagram, you see that we have the standard PSTN or simple traditional telephone network. A VUIP provider, which means VUIP software, can be connected to the PSTN network and bound to one or more phone numbers so that the calls coming in from mobiles and fixed phones are channeled uh, to the VOIP provider system. This VOIP provider converts the incoming analog signals into digital signals and routes it through the network and sometimes over the internet uh, to the receiver's software phone. The receiver must be configured or bound to the VOIP provider with the configuration for the VOIP software uh, to determine who should receive the call. Similarly, if a VUIP user wants to make a call to a real phone in the PSTN network, they can dial the number using the number pad on their VUIP software uh, and initiate the call. The call will route to the VUIP provider servers as a digital signal and VUIP provider will place an actual call to the PSTN network and convert the digital voice signals to analog so that the receiver using a standard phone can hear the message. Uh, now, why do businesses use VUIP? Well, uh, there are lots of advantages and benefits. VUIP is an ideal solution to provide employees with a reliable phone service and it won't cost you all that much. Uh, you don't have to buy the telephony hardware and you only need to install an app in the employee's laptop or in their smartphone. Uh, VOIP providers enable flexibility and professional calling feature for one low price compared to the traditional phone systems because you usually get uh, interactive voice response so uh, built, it, built into it and you can route calls, forward calls, enable voice mailboxes and etc. easily. Instead of having a server room with uh, an, uh, on your location, uh, with the uh, PBX private branch exchanges, all you need are configured VUIP desk phone. Uh, so it's less hardware and less costly. Uh, if you want an existing phone number to be added into the VUIP software, the PBX can also be connected to a VUIP solution to extend the facilities. So cheap operational costs uh, because of all these businesses. Uh, like to use VOIP and also uh, when you are taking uh, calls to multinational operation if you are in a multinational operation you would need to take a lot of international calls and if you are using the traditional network it costs a lot but through VOIP when you are co taking calls through internet it's very less uh, costly okay so here's a question uh, from 2022 summer paper uh, so now we have listened uh, to TCP, IP, SIP and VOIP. Let's see what kind of questions you are getting. Okay, Mobile devices communicate uh, over the internet using the transmission control protocol and internet protocol TCP, IP. TCP, IP uses a four layer model. The question is identify the correct sequence of layers when data is sent. Right. So, okay, the only correct answer is A because B, C, D are not in uh, correct order. Uh, so, the answer is application layer, transport layer, internet layer and link layer. In part 2, uh, state what is meant by a network communication protocol. Uh, a network communication protocol is a, a set of rules or procedures for transmitting data between computers over or over a network so with that you are getting uh, two one markers this is also from the same paper and it's a two marker uh, 
phone calls can be made over the internet using voice over internet protocol voip tcp ip and voip both are packets uh, both use packets to carry data but only voip can be used for making a phone call explain why tcp ip is not suitable for making a phone call uh, the answer is because TCP IP doesn't allow users to enjoy a real-time uninterrupted call because packets are recent. Like when if a packet, uh, a data packet is corrupted in the TCP IP model, it resends the cor uh, pack, uh, pack, uh, data packet. Uh, so it will interrupt the message. Like when you are talking to somebody, they are saying, oh, right? So when a packet is interrupted and when that packet goes later, you won't be able to listen to a real-time uh, uninterrupted call. So this is kind of a question. And then uh, please check some more past papers and try to answer with yourself based on the knowledge that you gain on this lesson. So until next time, uh, good luck.